Uh, five minutes before the bottom of the hour, Chief of Staff John Kelly hitting back at the press for politicizing the president's call to a Gold Star family and sharing his own experience with the loss of his son in Afghanistan. I said to him, sir, there's nothing you can do to lighten the burden on these families. But let me tell you what I tell them. And what, let me tell you what my best friend, Joe Dunford, told me, because he was my casualty officer. He said, Kel, um, he was doing exactly what he wanted to do when he was killed. He knew what he was getting into by joining the, that 1%. He knew what the possibilities were because we're at war. And when he died, in the four cases we're talking about in Niger, my son's case in Afghanistan, when he died, he was surrounded by the best men on this earth, his friends. All right, uh, joining us now. Joining us now is retired U.S. Marine Corps bomb tech, Johnny Joey Jones, who lost both of his legs defending our country. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us, Joey. So it, morning, sounds, it sounds like General Kelly is saying, those words comforted me. So he gave the advice to the president to say that to this Gold Star family. He did, and they took offense to it. They didn't like it. What is your, what's your response? Wow, context goes a really long way, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, when someone like General Kelly stands up there and tells you what was said and why it was said, I believe in his integrity far before any politician involved in this crazy issue. Uh, what we should be talking about are the four people that died, the four heroes that died, Indeed. and how we can prevent that from happening again. Not some made-up controversy because, oh, by the way, I've listened to President Trump for two years. He rarely puts things into the words of a politician. That's how he speaks. And if there was any misunderstanding as to what he meant, a phone call or an inquiry would go a long way before we drag this soldier's name through the mud, literally, over a phone call. Sure. He deserves right. better than this. All four of them deserve better than this, and it's disgusting. Johnny, you just said it's a made-up controversy. Why do you say that? Because when we get context of why he said he knew exactly what he was getting into, and by the way, I told my family before I left, I knew exactly what I was doing, and that's what I wanted to go do. So anyone that says that isn't a common term or a common notion, they're, they're blatantly false or they're making it up, I'm not sure. Um, so I can't tell you what was said on that phone call. Right. And quite frankly, it's none of my business. Mm -hmm. I want that Gold Star family member to feel consoled, uh, but I also want a congressperson to get the facts straight straight before she goes to the media and jumps on an opportunity to make this a partisan issue. Johnny, I thought it was so extraordinary that the chief of staff, General Kelly, went out there and did what he did. There was only one person in America that could have answered all the questions that the media was going to town with, and he did it. How surprised are you that they're still running with the controversy about the state, the so-called controversy about the statements, and saying that General Kel Kelly is complicit because he's working, in the case of some editorial writers, because he's working for President Trump? I'm not surprised at all. I mean, look where we are today. Um, you know, I tweeted or I text Greg Gutfeld and I said, you know, some things should be a no-go zone yesterday. And, uh, and he told me, you know, we're redefining no-go zones. They don't exist anymore. So I'm not surprised, but I'm absolutely disgusted. This is disgusting. This person should be honored, his memory should be honored, and his family should be left well enough alone to grieve. Mm -hmm. I can tell you 24 hours after losing someone you love with all your heart, you're in no state of mind to make a judgment call on much of anything. I don't know anything about what is or isn't um, you know, sanctimonious or, or something sacred, but I can tell you mm -hmm. I do I have a pretty good idea of what is decent in these situations, and what is decent is to let a family mourn. Uh, and to not make this a political matter. Uh, you know, obviously President Trump didn't do himself any favors immediately after this, uh, but I do believe that General Kelly put the period on this conversation, and it's time to move on and start talking about the honor and dignity, sure. the honor, courage, and commitment this person served with. Uh, yeah, I hope the I know the president tweeted last night, but I hope he doesn't anymore. I, I just hope he refuses to take any Absolutely. more questions on it and just put it to bed. There's nothing else to say. He answered everything. Going forward, what's he going to do? Is he going to continue to call the families? I think so. I you bet know, not. I, when I listen to General Kelly, um, 
I kind of hope he doesn't. I hope he writes letters so they have something to look back 30 years from now and, uh, and he lets those closest to the heroes um, make those calls and make those words. I can tell you I've laid on a battlefield and watched my brother take his last breath. It took me seven years to face his wife and today it would be just as hard as it was that day. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I was in charge of keeping him safe just like the president's in charge of sending him there. It's not an easy thing to do and if you don't have the perfect words, which there are no such thing, there's really uh, not a lot to gain by making the mm -hmm. phone call. So I hope he doesn't. I hope he writes the letter, gives them something to hold on to, and lets the people who knew him closest uh, make those phone calls. Surely. All right. Johnny, thank you very much for joining us from Atlanta with your Thank you for everything. Absolutely. Thank you. Indeed. Gosh.